Hey guys, welcome back to Nerd Cube, related video. Today, we're going to check out the Womir K98 that was sent to us over at XBX. But as always, my thoughts are my own. We are seeing this video at the same time as you do. Let's get right into the box. Inside, we get the usual stuff we typically get from a pre-built. Besides the board, we get the Type-C cable, manual, as well as extra red accented keycaps out of the box. The Womir K98 is a stack acrylic and single mode keyboard in the 1800 layout. The case is actually four layers of acrylic that is pieced together to fit the PCB. And it's quite similar to the ACR81 I reviewed way back. It even has the same bottom fit with the ACR. Unlike the ACR81 though, this comes loaded with switches and keycaps. I got mine with the SMD Gateron Browns, and later on, we'll hear it stock versus modded. The keycaps are the pudding type, and we commonly see this on budget boards. Only this time, it's colored with blue and red accent mods. If you're just starting out with mechanical keyboards, and you really need the number pad on the right, then the 1800 layout should suit you well. It basically is a full-size keyboard made compact. My Fekker keyboard also shares the same layout, and though it's not my preference, I can see this becoming handy in the work environment where you are crunching numbers left to right. The PCB is 3 to 5 pin hot swap and incorporates perky and underglow RGB. From my experience, it's more than bright enough to shine through, even with opaque keycaps. And with the help of the translucent case, the lighting is diffused and frosted evenly through the chassis. It's still nerd facing though, which is a huge con for me, as cherry propel keycaps are not natively supported without interference, but that's what the paper mod is for. Otherwise, the PCB is fairly standard with software on the computer to control the RGB. The included switches are the SMD versions of the Gatron Browns, and as a light tactile enjoyer myself, I love the feel of the Browns. In the sound department though, they're quite thin sounding, with a hint of scratch but nothing lube can't handle. The keycaps, as I said earlier, are thin pudding keycaps to show off the RGB. The extra accent kits is a nice touch as you can customize the look of your board without buying another set. But on the sound department, paired with the Gatron Browns, they are thin and lack a good sound signature. The stabs are plate mounted and they aren't lubed or even clipped. I wish Womir could have lubed this as this would have been a great budget board for those beginners who don't want to tinker with their keyboards. Hopefully, in the next iteration, they'd consider this. As for mounting, it's an integrated mount board. The plate proper is acrylic and it's placed between the acrylic layers while the PCB is flashed through the surface of the last layer. Due to this, the board doesn't offer much flex and the board is quite muted. Let's quickly mod this up to have a better sound. I first disassembled the board to be able to add tape mod to the PCB. I then changed up the switches to the Pecker Pandas to give it a nice deep talk. To supplement that, I added the PBT Pebo keycaps I originally used on the ACR81 as it complements the blue quite nicely. And lastly, my custom cable mod cable.
As you can hear, the board sounds nice with the mods I did. I bet even with only the tape mod, this could sound good. Keep in mind though, that the mods I did cost as much or more than the board itself. So it's not the best config budget-wise. I just want to squeeze out the best possible sound I could get from this board. For the price of $86 or 4,500 pesos, you have many other options in the market. If you want to build your own 1800 layout keyboard, you can do so as well. On the pre-built side, you got the Keycon K4, the RK100s, and the ever-popular 3098B from Ako. Hopefully XBX or Wamir can address my concerns on the board and improve upon it in the future. If you happen to get this in a sale, I think it's still a nice grab for the price. As the board is not that hard to disassemble, has switches and keycaps for the price, and the RGB, if that's your main priority, is a nice touch to the already nice package. So, what do you think of the board? Leave them down on the comment section below. Once again, I'm John J. Bimaba, and I'll see you in the next video.